this T5i autofocus drives me crazy. I don't even know if I'm in focus right now. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is LJ and this is A Journey East. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my five most secret tips for starting a YouTube channel. I get questions about this a lot and I actually did a whole Q&A all about being a content creator in an earlier episode of Freelance Friday, so I'll be sure to leave that in the description box. But I've watched a ton of these videos over the years and there's some really great ones out there, but I feel like there are a few things that a lot of these videos are missing and not really, you know, talking about enough. And I do have to put out a disclaimer to do as I say, not necessarily as I do. A lot of these tips are things that I've kind of discovered from working with clients and from working with brands over the years and not necessarily that I do on my own channel. So please don't look at my channel and be like, she doesn't know what she's talking about. I'm not taking her advice because I swear, I know some good stuff, it's just I don't always practice what I preach. You guys know what I mean. Okay, let's get into it. Speaking of doing as I say and not as I do, first tip is stick to a theme and do it well. So if you didn't know, I started out as a beauty channel just because that was kind of like the popular thing to do at the time, honestly. I've never been super passionate about beauty, I've never been very talented at beauty, I've never been super knowledgeable about beauty, but I just did it because it was sort of popular and like just an easy way to sort of get into the content creation community. And since then, I've sort of evolved, and that's okay, but I think that YouTube really, really works for people who are good at one thing, and they're really known for that one thing. So even beyond just being like a beauty guru, I think the creators who really succeed are the ones who are known for doing, you know, drugstore foundation reviews, or, you know, in-depth eyeshadow tutorials, or high-end makeup hauls. Like, they're known for kind of a specific thing in their niche area, same goes for any other kind of YouTuber. I know a few camera guys who specifically are great with Canon camera tips. Well, I have a Canon camera, so when I have a question about it, I go to one of their channels because I know that they're gonna have that content on there. I don't have to kind of search around for the right content. Like I said, this is something that I kind of didn't do very well. I do a wide variety of things from vlogs to makeup videos still to videos like this where I talk about freelancing and business and digital marketing and things like that. And I think that's okay to expand because it gets really boring to talk about the same thing for like years. I mean, I've been in YouTube for a couple years now, so it's a little boring to just talk about eyeshadow all day, right? But I think the people who do that transition the best are the ones who waited for their audience to really build up before they switched gears and or added things to the mix, I guess. I don't think it's really a great idea to switch gears 100% and I still haven't done that. Like I said, I still do beauty. It's just I kind of added a bunch of other things into the mix. I think I could have waited a little while longer to build my audience up, you know. I feel like if I would have waited until I hit, you know, 20,000, 25,000 subscribers, I would be getting way higher views and have a way more engaged audience and things like that, but it is what it is, you know. You you just you do what the heart wants, you know. Number 2, watch time is king. When you're planning out your videos, make sure that they are compelling from start to finish. So a lot of people introduce themselves in their videos, a lot of people come up with these really cute little like song and dance kind of um, intro like themes, almost like a commercial or like a TV show. Those are all cute and everything, but it might be kind of steering your audience away a little bit. Even me, I always say, hey guys, it's LJ. And I do that because my channel name is not my name name. So if my, my channel name was Latasha James, which is my name, I probably wouldn't introduce myself. But since it's a journey east, a lot of people are confused. They're like, what is her name? Who is this girl? Like, is this a group channel? Like, what is this? So I like to say, hey guys, I'm LJ, so you guys know. But if your channel name is Latasha James, don't even bother with that five seconds. People decide, I believe the latest stat is within eight seconds if they're gonna watch the rest of the video. And you want people to watch your whole video. Even beyond just watching your video, if they stay on the platform, even if they go over to another channel based off of your video, YouTube still really favors that in the algorithm and it looks really good and helps your videos rank in search. And that sounds a little bit confusing, I know, but really what that comes down to is just making sure that you're tagging your videos appropriately, titling them appropriately, you're interacting in the YouTube community, so you're kind of getting like grouped in with these other content creators that are on your sort of level in your niche 
category and that your viewers are likely to click over to and watch and stay on a YouTube binge watch. So that's what you want your viewers to do. It looks really good um, to YouTube. One trick that I do is I always link another video as the first link in the description box of my video so that if people open it up, they don't just open it up and kind of like click out. They're like, oh, she said watch this video next and then they click over and that's just one trick you can do. You can also utilize the cards feature or whatever it's called, the end slate feature at the end of the video, things like that. Tip number three, equipment doesn't matter much. A lot of people when they first set out to start a channel, they think that they have to have like the best camera in the freaking planet. And I mean, yeah, that helps, I guess it's nice. But at the end of the day, it's about content. I, there are people out there who have amazing quality and do not get very many subscribers and views. There are people who film on their iPhone and I'm like, how are you getting all these views? You have a million subscribers. This is crazy and everywhere in between. I mean, there are certain videos that quality matters more than most. Definitely for beauty, quality is important. You know, at least if you're doing tutorials or even a lot of reviews because you're doing swatches, so you want color fidelity to be there and all of that stuff. But if you're just doing a video like this, where you're just like sitting down and talking, quality, you know, you want it to be in HD, you want it to be clear, you want it to be lighted well and stuff like that, but you can get pretty similar quality with this guy. So this is the iPhone 7 Plus. I actually use this to do a lot of my vlogging. It is really shaky for vlogs, so I do want to get like a um, like a selfie stick or like a monopod or something for it. But the quality, I mean, it shoots in 4K, it shoots in 1080p, and it looks really good. The sound isn't that great either, so I might want to get a little microphone for it. They have a lot of iPhone microphones nowadays. But yeah, this is like totally fine if I was gonna sit down and do this chatting and talking video and I didn't have what I have now, which is the Canon T5i, I will have it linked down below. I would just use my iPhone, honestly. I'll show you a couple other cameras that I've used over the years and or still use. So this one is the Samsung WB350F. It's a point and shoot. And I use this for vlogging. I still use it sometimes for vlogging when um, I wanna get a little bit better quality than my iPhone. Honestly, it shoots at about the same quality, but the sound is really good on this. And it's just nice because I can zoom in really nicely and it feels a little bit more comfortable in my hand. And I think that it's a lot more stable since it's heavy and I can kind of hold it by the lens like this. This was, I think, under $150. And honestly, this would be perfect for sitting on talking videos as well. And I did do a full in-depth review of it over on what used to be my vlog channel. It's now kind of a dead channel, but it does have some good videos on there still. And then this one, if you've watched any of my older videos, any of like my past 10 to 20 videos, it's more than likely shot on this. This is the Panasonic Lumix DMC G5. And this is a mirrorless camera. I think these cameras are so severely underrated. It's an amazing camera. I love this guy. I'm gonna keep it forever. Um, it is very affordable. Again, it's cheaper than the T5i, but it has a lot of the same functionalities. Um, one of the things that I really love about it, it ha is it has this flip out screen so you can still see yourself when you're filming. You know, you can change the lens. This is just the kit lens. It's the 14 to 42 millimeter lens, works great, but I have a couple of other really like nicer lenses for it as well. Um, autofocus is amazing on this. This is one thing that is highly superior to the T5i. This T5i autofocus drives me crazy. I don't even know if I'm in focus right now. I spent so long trying to focus myself manually and it was really stressed me out. So this focus, autofocus, is amazing. So there's lots of other options. You don't have to go out and buy a 70D, a 7D. Like, I mean, that's good and great and you should definitely invest as your channel grows. But when you're small, don't waste so much of your money. I've seen so many people start YouTube, spend like a thousand dollars on equipment and then realize they don't even like YouTube. They're not good at YouTube, whatever. And um, they really regret spending all that money. Lighting, I'm gonna leave all my lighting down below as well too. I use a ring light and um, a softbox and just like some bits and bobs, nothing too expensive though. Tip number four, thumbnails are everything. So a lot of people neglect their thumbnails and this is super, super important. I mean, you should be thinking about your thumbnail when you're thinking about you know the theme of your video and what you're gonna film that day. You should kind of start to build a visual idea of what it's gonna look like if you can because thumbnails and titles, I guess I should include titles too. So those are the two things that people see before they see anything about your video, obviously. So these are the things that make them decide if they're gonna click on your video or not. This is kind of another do as I say, not as I do, because I tend to be pretty lazy with my thumbnails, I'm not gonna lie, but the better that you can make your thumbnails, the more likely people are going to be to click on them. So definitely take some time to learn PicMonkey and Canva. I do have a tutorial for that as well. I'll leave that down below. 
Um, take some time to learn those those tools because they're free, they're easy to use. One other tip about thumbnails is I find that the more color that I put into my thumbnails, the more likely people are to click. So I really like a minimalistic kind of black and white and you know just skin tone color palette. But um, yeah, YouTube viewers don't. <laughs> YouTube viewers like bright and colorful. And just think about it. Like, just scroll through your subscription box and just kind of start to take note of what your eye darts to first. Mine always tends to, to go towards yellow. I don't know if that's like an everybody thing or if that's just me, but just something to keep in mind. You might want to like include a border, or include some lettering that's colored, things like that. And tip number five is really just for those of you who are trying to make some income off of YouTube, which I think is most of us. I mean, it takes up a lot of time and it's definitely a job, so it would be nice to get paid at least a couple pennies for it, right? So affiliate links are where it's at. A lot of people go into YouTube thinking that YouTube AdSense is going to like make them rich and all they gotta do is get a ton of views and they're gonna be good because Google pays them. And, and like, yeah, I do get a check from Google every month, but it's very, very small. And it really just depends on so many other factors that it's hard to really rely on. The nice thing about affiliate links is that I can share them anywhere, I can share them on my other social platforms, I can link every single thing that I want to in my description box from expensive things like cameras to cheap things like lip gloss and you get a percentage of the sales that are made off of those links and obviously that percentage will grow as your audience grows because there's gonna be more people clicking on it. You're not gonna get rich off of these overnight. I'm not saying that this is like a get rich quick scheme. YouTube in general is not a get rich quick scheme. So if that's what you're looking for, go somewhere else. But affiliate links are just really important. I think if you're trying to make an income because they really are kind of like a self-reliant sort of form of almost passive income. I mean, you do have to work a little bit for it, but they're, they're pretty passive. I mean, I can literally make money in my sleep from affiliate links, which is awesome. I even like affiliate linking better than sponsorships because sponsorships are up to so many other people and brands and you know, it's up to the market and the time of year and just a ton of other things go into whether a brand wants to sponsor me or not. There are weeks that I get multiple offers for sponsorships and there are weeks that I get none. There are months that I get none. So it's really kind of just like up in the air a lot of the times. So I like to have a few other uh, revenue streams up my sleeve. The key to making money on YouTube is multiple revenue streams. I can't say that enough times. So affiliate links can be one of them and you know, you can do a ton of other things like online courses or coaching coaching or you know thumbnail creations for their creators there's just the possibilities are really endless but I highly recommend adding a couple things to your tool belt besides just relying on Google Ads so I hope this video was helpful for you I hope my face was in focus I don't know that'd be annoying if it wasn't but um, yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this this is a part of my freelance Friday series where I kind of peel back the business behind, you know, online marketing and freelancing and online businesses and all of that fun stuff. So if you are interested in these videos, I'll have a playlist down below which has all of the other ones I've done. I try to do these every other week. I was a little bit behind because of, you know, some stuff, but I think I'm back on track now. So make sure to leave me a thumbs up if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And I will see you guys next time in my next one. Next one. Next time. I said next a lot. You know what I mean. <laughs> Bye. Hope you guys can't, can't hear the shenanigans going on outside. It's uh, movement weekend and it's crazy.